right leg. Uh, the conflict gives me a job. If there is no other <laughs> conflict, I may have to open a boutique. Because absolutely I have no way of living. And today being Shivaratri, we can talk about the dream of the century till tomorrow morning. Probably all will have a better workshop if you can, but I'm not sure whether the, the organizers will allow me. But what is interesting is, you know, when I was asked to speak, I can't look back the last 30 years. Ever since as a student and a faculty, I was called all the names for the simple reason my area of interest was Israel. From an Israeli agent to a Zionist agent to what not. And people call Israel as settler colonialism. And suddenly it's interesting to see the very same people becoming friends of Israel. It's a full circle. <laughs> I'm not saying, but I'm not saying anything. I know after so many people giving the background, that is very little I can add, but still I will let me try to do a few things. There are six interesting things for the Palestinians in the Trump's plan. The first, it talks about two state solution. It talks about dignity of the Palestinian people. It talks about as some sort of a settlement freeze for four years. It says self-determination for the Palestinians. It talks about the economic prosperity. And finally it says, if the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is resolved, a greater Arab countries will normalize relations with Israel. These are the, what I would call, Interesting thoughts. But when you are a student of the subject, you also have to look at a few more things. It says the General Assembly adopted nearly 700 resolutions on Israel. The Security Council passed over 100 resolutions. And very interestingly says, resolutions never solve problems. So when you are a student of the subject, you need to look at it rather carefully. It talks about limited sovereignty about the Palestinians. It says the yard space in the West Bank and the territorial waters in the Gaza Strip will be under the Israeli control. No settlement will be removed and Israel is not going back to the June 67 line. And it talks about some sort of a $50 billion package aimed at 1 million jobs, unemployment rate less than 10%, and reducing poverty by 50% of what it is today. And given the American policy of you America first, Trump's policy, you can assume that 50 billion will not come from the United States. Somebody has to pay the bills. You only make the plan, you pay the bill. <laughs> and it talks about a territorial swap, which is not new. The Clinton parameters of 2000 talked about under the original plan, the idea was Israel will withdraw completely from the Gaza Strip and between 94 to 97% of the West Bank and therefore the remaining 63% will be swapped from Israel proper. That is the original idea. And today you talk about the same. There will be territorial swap. But the territorial swap is rather interesting. The territorial swap is not territorially contiguous. You talk about a small piece of land on the Israeli-Egyptian border in the Negev and you also introduce a possible transfer of what you would call Arab Triangle, which basically means you can transfer the small portion of that land from Israel to Palestinian, both land and the people, which would basically mean Israel will reduce its Arab population. So therefore you can maintain your Jewish uh, sovereignty. And if you look at the map, which I was trying to do, you can't help think about what we call Swiss cheese. More holes, less cheese. That is what the Palestinian state would be. And is it a pro-Israeli one? I don't think so. It is pro Netanyahu. Because Trump has emerged as a campaign manager of Netanyahu. 
<laughs> I don't think even Netanyahu could have drafted a plan like this. No way could have done. <laughs> if you look at it, before the first round of election, he says Jerusalem is the capital of the United of uh, Israel. Just before the election, he changed the uh, U.S. embassy from Jerusalem from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Then the second round of election, he says Golan Heights is Israeli sovereign territory. Then again he said, the settlements are not illegal. And somehow he found out all the things he did was not sufficient to make the Israelis re-elect Netanyahu. Nothing was working. So therefore he comes with this plan. Okay, Israel can annex the entire Jordan Valley, the entire airspace of West Bank will be Israelis. Maybe he is hoping that Israelis will re-elect Netanyahu. Next week. Unfortunately, the Israeli legal system is much more serious than anything you can ever imagine. <laughs> you know, in India, we are very fond of FIRs. I will file an FIR. That's a very dramatic thing, you know, file an FIR. But you never ask the question, what is a conviction rate? Probably one person, or even less. In Israel, unless you are sure the person will be convicted, you don't even file a charge. So if you look at the dramatic announcement, few hours before Trump made this announcement, Netanyahu was formally charged by the Attorney General. Interestingly, the same person appointed by Netanyahu. So the party loyalties don't work in Israel. You go by the law. No one is above law, no one is above war, whether you are serving Prime Minister or a retired Prime Minister. It doesn't make a difference. In that sense, the U.S. is a legal system have a lot to learn from the Israeli legal system. And therefore, if you look at today, the election will take place on 2nd. Exactly two weeks later, Netanyahu will be facing, will be facing the court. And we know the Israeli party system. By 17th of March, when he's supposed to meet the judges in the court, there is no way Netanyahu or anybody will form it up. So that is what it is. So Trump is acting like a campaign manager, but it is most unlikely to work. And okay. What is the reactions? You know, no one very vociferously criticized the plan except the Palestinians. All the names, references you have said. Some of them very Arabic passed the resolution, very, very mildly. If you talk to everyone, it's okay, people should negotiate. We're looking at the positive statements. What was India's position? India said, nobody, diplomatically, two state solution, and we should resolve the problem through negotiations. The reason is simple nobody wants to antagonize Trump. God willing, till now, but if you are not lucky, four more years. You are stuck with it. So, therefore, why would you unnecessarily say something and get into trouble? But that also means this plan will not have a, even a million to one chance of succeeding. So therefore, why unnecessarily say something and get into the anger? Because once you tick off Trump, you never know what you are going to get. You may get a missile or you may get something else. <laughs> so therefore, the idea is, you know it is not going to succeed, but why unnecessarily make an enemy of Trump? Why? That is the strategy. But for me, I think it is a deal of the century. I'm putting my neck for this to say this. This is the greatest thing happened to the Palestinian people. Whether you believe it or not. Nothing could have been better than this plan. You know, if you look at Vivekananda, in Karma Yoga he says, success is a bad teacher. It is an insult humiliation, hurt, which makes you better, you learn better from that. If you look at a, the draft as a Palestine, what does it tell you? It tells you the world doesn't care about the Palestinians. You are immaterial to us. If you look at the map, you expect anybody to accept this territory, which basically means where does the Palestinian find themselves internationally? It should make them to go back to the table and say, why did I go wrong to reach this place? Because Trump's plan did not come overnight. It is a long process. 
If you look at the Palestinian history from the 1920s, they were piggybacking on somebody's else. They never took the leadership on their own. Because if you look at it, no state is formed or given on a plate. You have to fight and get it. Blood and sweat. Your blood, not somebody's blood. That is how states were formed. And Palestinians, instead of asking somebody's help for the decision, they allow others to decide for them from 1948 till today. So the Arab countries took part in the interest, took the leadership, and if you look at all the Arab countries, they paid the price. It is not their fight. It is a Palestinian fight. And therefore, if you look at it, the Arab countries took the lead, and you know, all of them paid the price, both physically and other. Why would Syria lose Golan Heights? Why would Israel, Egypt lose the uh, Sinai Peninsula for a pretty long time? Jordan lost every Why? Because if you look at it, they took the lead, and therefore, they also use the Palestinians for their own political issues. And therefore, today, the Palestinians have a chance to look back. Why did they go wrong? How did they reach this point? And that should make us, if you look at it, this is what even what uh, uh, Professor Ashwin was saying. You have two Palestinian states. People talking about a two-state solution. You have a three-state solution. And since becoming president in 2005, President Abbas came to India five times. How many times he went to Gaza? Still any idea? Not even once. That's why. That is what it is. You travel all over the world, and you can't go to the other side of your own territory. And have you ever seen any national liberation movement when you have two prime ministers, two government, two authorities? So you want to ask the question, you are fighting Israel. If an enemy cannot unite you, what is going to unite you? Nothing will. I think for me, that is the greatest thing. So if you look at the great Trump, okay, things can never be worse than this. And that should enable them to go back to basics. The first precondition is, no matter how you disagree with each other, Hamas and Fatah will have to unite. No other way. And that is what I would say. It, it, it's a roundabout way of saying. All the other things people said is why. But I look at it. The only good thing about things is because you are absolutely alone. And look at the Arab countries. The Palestinian issue will be very popular in the JNU campus. People will still use the Palestinian as a poster for JNU's elections. <laughs> I have all the actions of that in my system. You may use it, but if you look at the Arab world, Palestinian question is not a priority for any of the Arab world. You ask Syria, Iraq, Egypt, they are fighting for the survival. The territorial integrity, the regime survival, existence as a state is more important than the political rights of the Palestinian people. It is not that they are not concerned about the Palestinians. It is not you are number one, number two, or number three priority. Talk to anyone. That is what it is. So this should enable. This is, if you look at it, no country was openly criticizing Trump's plan. The reason is okay. This is one it is. So I would think that you know, if you see from that angle, I will still go by the title, date of the century. Not for the reasons what people think, for an entirely different angle, because for me, this is going to be a starting point for a new Palestinian understanding of the position in the international world. Thank you very much.